I'm Chad Huntley, NBC News. Three more Americans are on their way to the moon. Navy commanders Alan Bean, Richard Gordon, and Charles Conrad and their Apollo 12 command ship are in good shape in spite of a launch that was one of the more harrowing in the nine years of American manned space flights. 45 seconds into the mission, the spacecraft lost its main electric power. It was thought at first that the rocket had been struck by lightning. Later, space officials said static electricity had accumulated on the rocket's skin as it sped through the rain clouds. The crew suited up for the launch left their quarters shortly after 8 o'clock. They waved to space center workers and climbed aboard a special air-conditioned bus for the nine-mile ride to the launch pad. They still weren't certain they were going. A bad weather front lay over Florida, and it was raining. After they reached the pad, the word came to go ahead. The countdown came on schedule. President Nixon watched the liftoff. T minus 20. 17 seconds, swing arm back. We have guidance internal. 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. All engines running. Commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff. 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pete Conrad reports that your program is in. Tower clear. We have picked a roll program, and this baby is really going. Roll complete. Roger, Pete. will be made in the future as, have the, as they have been made in the past as to the commitment of this nation to the program. And I realize that within those in the program, between scientists and engineers and others, there are different attitudes as to what the emphasis should be, whether we should emphasize more, more exploration or more in taking the knowledge that we have already acquired and making practical applications of it. Uh, all of these matters have been brought to my attention. I can assure you every side is getting a hearing. We want to have a balanced program, but most important, we are going forward. The space people liked what the president said, but some noted that while he sounded promising from their point of view, which embraces a high level of space activity, he made no commitments. After Apollo 11 last July, Vice President Agnew made a very encouraging speech to the same group he mentioned to Mars flight, but that, after all, was not the president speaking. Now, the livelihood of these people depends on space, and though they are engineers and technicians seemingly impervious to the ordinary doubts and fears, they are people. Consequently, they battle superstition like the rest of us. And there had been a feeling here at the Cape, hard to explain but even harder to deny, that if anything was going wrong, it would be with this flight. 
Perhaps because of an emotional letdown after the first moon landing, people felt they weren't working for the same perfection. Perhaps because a good number of top engineers have already been let go in a cutback of personnel. For whatever reason, the feeling persisted until a couple of weeks ago, and then it changed. And the only thing that went wrong with this launching cannot be charged against them. Lightning, static electricity, whatever it was, it was not their fault, and the flight is fine. Frank McGee, NBC News, Cape Kennedy.